Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about abstinence and why we as Christians teach this. So I'm going to just do a few here I have on the screen for you. Uh, so we got Hebrews, Thessalonians, Corinthians. The Bible says it lots of different ways. Um, it describes women um, who are sexually promiscuous as grave diggers, uh, the grave. Uh, in this little thing here, let me see if I can move this around actually and show you. Whoops, not that one, this one. Genesis 39 7 through 2 is a story about a woman who's married who tries to get, I think it's Joseph. Yeah, Joseph to have sex with her. The way they say sex in the Bible is to lie with or know or knew or lays with or things like that. Okay. So he says, no, I'm not going to do that and runs off. He just drops everything and runs and she turns around and says, oh no, he raped me. And so Joseph gets punished for that. Right. So that type of person who's promiscuous, the thought processes that they have, the ways that they think about the world, the sort of selfishness that comes with promiscuity, we see it right now in our society today. So the Bible talks about this, let marriage be held in honor among all, let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous, right? For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. We've talked about honor before. All right. So, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. So there's a recognition that we have a sex drive, obviously, and it's very strong. And so the answer to that in the Bible is to be married. This creates family. Once you get married, you're now a family, separate from your own family, but part of it. And then this also will create children and these children will have people to help them grow and learn, etc. So <clears throat> this one right here though, is going to lead into my next thing I want to show you. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. But the sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Okay, so this is something that you do that hurts you physically. And let me show you how. So this is a video I saw a few months ago. It's actually six months old and I think the STD is like a year old. It's a brand new one and it is a brand new flesh eating one. So let's just watch this. Let me see if I can get this done. Okay, here we go. There is a case of a flesh-eating STD. Are they all? Nah, not, cool. not flesh-eating. Flesh-eating? Like yeah, someone's ever woken up and was like, I have one ball now. <laughs> this she one burned me. is a flesh-eating. <laughs> I was uncircumcised yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Helpful flesh-eating? <laughs> huh. huh. Thank you, committee. Where's that sweater? <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. This is a flesh-eating <clears throat> STD, and there were uh, a couple cases that were, I think, 30 cases they found last year. How in does the an UK. STD spawn? I thought we had all of them. Yeah, well, that was 2019. I'm sorry, 2019. They had 30 cases cases of this STD in the UK, but the rise of infection in the past two years could pose a public health risk. How do you say it? Uh, the name of it? Yeah. Uh, what is that disease called? They're calling is it, it what is I think it is Dono Dono Venosis Dono Venosis Dono Venosis so whoever that scientist Donovan was Donovan. did not like a nigga yeah. named Donovan. Donovan he was waiting shit. to find a disease. <laughs> Donovan Itis. Call, call it Donovan Itis. fucking some weird shit. <laughs> so the, the symptoms yeah. of Donovan Itis is bulging red bumps, damaged skin, and the loss of genital tissue and color. Oh my God. And color? So. What happens when we have the hookup culture that we have? What happens when we ignore what the Bible says and we don't have 
a marriage. We don't have sex in that con in in that construct. What happens? Well, we get brand new flesh eating STDs. I'm gonna leave this in the comments guys or in the description I always say that in my comments that's where I comment to you so in my comments <laughs> I'm going to leave this link to this video you can watch the rest of it. it's not very much longer but you can see even here experts say cases of a flesh-eating STD are on the rise how does that happen because we keep going on and doing things the way God says not to do them how do, how do we spawn new ones? Because we keep doing the, the thing God tells you not to do. Okay, if you cannot keep your legs closed and you cannot keep it in your pants, then the exchange of fluids with multiple people as you hop to different people and the exchange of, I don't even know what, it's not, um, it's not germs, but <laughs> it's the exchange of your just natural flora that you have that both genders have. It's different for each one, but we both have natural, um, a natural biome basically there. And as you exchange that with more people, it creates new things. On top of that, more people having sex means more STDs, more different kinds, and they are all trading STDs with each other. The monkeypox thing that's going on right now, they are putting out PSAs for people who are homosexual because the cases of monkeypox is rising in that community. Why? Because they're constantly, you know, because the sexual transmitted disease is always high in that community because they're having just, they just freely have sex with each other every night. You know what I'm saying? There's somebody doing something with somebody. They have bars for these things and all this stuff. So it's not surprising when God says, either be abstinent or have a marriage for your outlet. It's not surprising that something like this happens with it. When we teach this in churches, we very rarely teach it like this. We just say disease and go, eh, you kind of know what disease is. No, I mean, it's flesh eating. They go on to say that this cannot be helped by antibiotics or it cannot be stamped out by antibiotics. It's antibiotic resistant which means it'll help a little bit, but basically you're still going to lose your genitals. You will have, you will be decolored and lose your genitals basically. Fun, right? This is, this is why we teach abstinence. If people say it doesn't work, I guess I can do a whole different one on that because this one's already long enough, but just think about it, guys. There's a reason why God tells us to do what he tells us to do. And it is not because he wants to stop you from having fun or be yourself or be free. It is because if you do it, it will hurt you. He knows how we're made. He knows who we are, etc. So I hope you have a great day. Remember to pray and read your Bible and I'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye.